<laughs> why? Why? Why did I answer the call? Fellow Toastmasters, future Toastmasters, and anyone here who does not know it yet that they should be a Toastmaster. I am sharing with you a recent experience that I hope you will benefit from. Thursday night, two nights ago, I'm working late, burning the midnight oil, trying to meet deadlines. Anyone been there? OK, I'm seeing some hands go up. When the phone rings, I look at the phone. I do not see a name. That means whoever is calling me is not in my contact list. And I have a policy. If I do not know who's calling, I just dismiss the phone call. So my fingers went to the phone, and I click on the green button. What was I thinking? I answered the phone. Hello? Hi, this is Sherry Thomas. <laughs> Dominic, I see you are attending the conference sessions Saturday morning. Yes. And I was wondering, could you be the test speaker? All of my other test speakers canceled out, and I need help. Sherry, thank you so much for thinking of me. But I'm working late. I've got a lot of deadlines. I have no time. I'm actually giving a presentation on Sunday, tomorrow, on, flexi on mental flexibility. And I'm giving another speech at another club on Thursday. I'm thankful that you asked me, but I do not have the time. That's what I thought. That's what I should have said. <laughs> but what Sherry heard was a nice and relaxed attitude. Sure, I could whip up a speech by Saturday. Why did I have to answer the phone call? I asked Sherry, when do you need my speech title? Well, I'm going to be at the district conference all day Friday. I'm going to be very busy. It's going to be a very hectic day. But, oh, she's so sweet. But whenever you get it to me, I'll fit it in. That's what she said. What I heard, reading between the lines, if you could get it to me in the next five to 10 minutes, I'll be so appreciative. <laughs> For the first time during this conversation, I did something right. I thought before I spoke. I did not commit as to when I would get her the speech title. Finally, I'm regaining some self-control. <laughs> she said, and remember, you could check your pathways and get credit for the speech. It's like, yeah, right, I got so many things to do. It's the last thing I'm going to have time to do. We end the phone call, and I go back finishing up work. Then before I leave, I figured, let me log on to Pathways and see if there is a speech that fits. And what did I find? Give an inspirational speech. And all of a sudden, everything clicked. I had the title, and I went to text her. My fingers hit the phone. What was I doing? I hit the green button, and I hear her voice. This is Sherry, Dominic. I go, why did I call? <laughs> Listen to this. As I'm talking to Sherry, and she's so appreciative on getting the speech title early. As I'm talking to Sherry, she says, well, Dominic, I know you're a very good speaker, and can you give the evaluators something to work on? And I'm confused. I'm giving a five to seven minute speech. What more do they need to work on? This is the district level. We're talking about seasoned, intense, professional evaluators. Sherry, were you asking me to throw the fight? Were you asking me to actually break some Toastmaster rules and do something wrong? Were you actually asking me to throw the evaluators an easy critique and feedback? I couldn't throw the fight. I'm going to come up here and do the actually best speech I could possibly deliver. I hang up the phone, and why did I have to call her? 
Now I've got more work to do. Now I'm looking at the time, and I see that I'm at least halfway through my speaking time, and I have not yet gotten to the inspirational portion of my message, and I'm thinking, whoa, Toastmasters, I could be on to something. What if we did a five to seven minute speech, and you just broke the ice and talked about some recent experiences, which means Toastmasters, we can give a five minute speech in two minutes. But the key is, the second part has to tie in to the first part. Why did I, end, did I make that call? Why did I accept that call? And the message I want to leave everyone here today is, when you're overworked, when you're feeling overwhelmed, when you're under a lot of pressure, that when life just seems to be so overwhelming and you can't find the strength nor the time to get your job done, and that call comes in and someone is asking you for help, when you say yes, is when you connect to a higher power. And when you connect to this higher power, you're lifted up above your problems. And you look down and you see that those conditions don't control me. I am not defined by those situations. These problems do not own me. And you have the power and the ability, because you're helping someone else out, your mind is taken off of your own problems and you can help someone else out and in return benefit yourself. Sherry, your phone number is now in my contact list. You can call me anytime. Fellow Toastmasters, will you accept the call? Contest Master. Don't you just love it when you're asked to evaluate or give feedback to an exemplary, charismatic, very experienced public speaker? I kind of do. Where are you, Dominic Alito? Whoa! He commands the stage. He had us with three little letters. Y-O-U. When you start a talk, I'm stealing his thunder, and say, don't you just love it? You slide that audience in your pockets, because what do we want, really? Fellow Toastmasters, distinguished guests, and Dominic? We want it to be about us. Will you answer the call? I'm so glad you did, Dominic, because you bring the laughs, you bring the inspiration, your voice is so delightful to listen to it becomes quite difficult to find out some things that would make it even better if. What if Dominic had come a little closer and spoken right to somebody in their eyes? Oh, wouldn't that be charming? <laughs> what if he excluded my favorite word? I never get dinged for ahs and ums, but boy, do I like the word and. If you take out the word and and just begin a sentence, you really have somebody's ear. I loved it when you did the phone call with Sherry. She's a lot of fun on the phone, and I'm sure Dominic is too. I would make those voice overs, we'll call them, imitating your voice on the phone and Sherry's, even more prominent. Really change your vocal variety there. You'll have us. And then something I've noticed a lot in Toastmasters lately. It's so difficult to figure out how to include you and you and you and not be pacing back and forth on the stage. I think that we should add a new category that's called staging. When do we move to stage right? Maybe because I want to talk to these people because I think I lost them. When do we take it back to center? And when we are ready to close our talk, he opened with three. Why, why, why? I would have loved in his inspirational moment for it to be another triad, overwhelmed, overworked, and under pressure. And then when you were closing, the title had us, Will You Answer the Call? And I know what it's like, because I've stumbled on my words quite a few times. You ended with, will you accept the call? 
But I'll tell you this, when I was sitting there preparing, right when he said, connect with your higher power, it's like you read my brain. And so I really take that inspiration from you, number one, to answer the call, number two, to say yes, and lastly, to connect with something greater than ourselves. Contest master. I want Dom and all my fellow Toastmasters to know that I have had the same phone number for 10 years, and many of you have it. And right after this contest, I'm so inspired by Dom's speech, I'm going to Metro to change my number. <laughs> Answering that call is a scary proposition, especially speaking in front of a district audience. Dom handled it like a pro. The techniques of an advanced speaker are something to share with as many people as possible. The first thing we noticed is that Dom pulled the audience. Many Toastmasters pull the audience, but the mistake that many make is they don't listen to the results of the poll. That's not what Dom did. He reacted to the great majority of people who raised their hand and used that in his speech. He also engaged with the audience in other ways by singling out a person in the audience with whom we're all familiar, Sherry Thomas, and including her in the speech because she made the call. And so she's on the spot. One area that I think Dom might improve upon is the structure of his speech. He had a delivery style that I like to call stand-up. It was very fluid, very comfortable, and relaxed. But audience members like to know where things are headed. And it took Dom a while to go from the call to the action in which he accepted that call prepared for a speech on short notice, and entertained all of us. I'm going to the Metro store first. I just want you to know that. <laughs> Dom also did other things that were fantastic. Vocal variety, so important and challenging when speaking in front of a large audience. Sometimes Dom was soft, sometimes he went big, and his body language was often open, taking a note from Sheryl Sandberg and leaning in. Audiences like when you lean in. It shows respect. It shows attention. It shows professionalism. I laughed out loud in Dom's speech many, many times, and I heard the audience laughing with him. He is a fantastic entertainer. And he's somebody who not only informed the audience, but took them on a journey, inspiring them to accept that call. Will you accept the call? Or will you join me going to Metro PCS? <laughs> it's a scary thing to be on stage, judged by professional evaluators. But Dom has no need to worry. Contest master. Hello? Hello? I hate it when that happens. Toastmaster Dominic, that is one of the two ways I would suggest you handle a phone call in the future from Toastmaster Sherry Thomas. Contestmaster, fellow Toastmasters, there are so many ways of dealing with a situation like that. And I love how our test speaker used humor throughout his speech to help make an important point about something very important to all of us, providing service. I like it when I'm entertained by a speech that has a serious message to it. It's much more likely I will recall it. And if I don't recall your speech, was there really any value to it? Because I won't take the action you were asking me to take. 
The way I handle the call, Dominic, from Sherry Thomas is as soon as I say hello and she says, John, this is Sherry Thomas. I said, this is John Schneier. You've reached my voicemail. Please leave a message at the tone. And then, Dominic, you dig deep into the bowels of your being and bring up the best fake beep that you possibly can. And then you say nothing again and let it handle itself. Your speech presentation, for me, as I said, very humorous. I have to confess a weakness that I have, Dominic. As I've gotten older, I've gotten a little more tired. I really could have used a nap before the contest. I would have felt better if your pacing was a little bit slower for me so I could stay with you. And at especially your transition points, a nice pause. That tells me we've completed a thought or an action. I can catch up with you, and then we can move on together. That way I know I'm not missing anything. You might have to come out and take some of the humor out or some of the other things in there. But again, if it has a greater impact and it stays with me longer, and for me, that's what I'm looking for, so much the better. I don't know if this was intentional or not. Your speech title was, Will You Answer the Call? When you closed, you used the word accept rather than answer. I don't know if that was intentional or if it was just an oversight. I would prefer whichever word you use, use it consistently. Because the pattern drives home my memory, and I'll be able to stay with the message. Good humor, high energy. I hope I gave you some suggestions, not only on your speech, but how to handle phone calls from Sherry. <laughs> and if you sprinkle those things in, your impact level with me will go up. And for me, that's what it's all about. Contest Masters.